you know there are a lot of impossibilities in the world sometimes things are not easy they are hard impossible and uh, i remember the story of a, a woman was walking along the beach and she found a bottle and uh, she picked it up wiped the sand off uh, with her hands and while she was wiping the sand off poof a genie appeared and uh, the genie said i will grant you one wish she said i thought genies grant three wishes the genie responded times are hard madam we had to cut back one wish so um, the woman pulled out a map she pulled out a map it was a world map and uh, she said you know look at all these middle eastern countries they are fighting with each other there is war and bloodshed she said i want these countries to stop fighting and get along in fact i want peace and harmony in all of the world the genie looked at the map and said lady be reasonable these countries have been fighting for years and years and years they have broken every peace treaty that they have signed and he said this is almost impossible it cannot be done wish for something else then the woman thought for a minute and she said well i've never found the right man he said you know a man who is considerate and fun likes to cook and help with the house cleaning a man who would get along with my family and not sit around watching sports all the time on television a man who will smother me with love and affection for all of my life that is what i wish for a good man the genie let out a sigh and she said and said okay lady you win let me see that map again some things are impossible finding the good man to some of you is impossible but i want to tell you with god all things are possible you see nothing is impossible with god i believe god can turn sri lanka around hey he just turned our cricket team around he can turn the nation around god can do anything you see some of you are saying oh it's going to get worse oh i don't know what's going to happen oh my goodness you know this i want to tell you you go anywhere in the world it's getting worse things are not easy because biblically the end is coming and when the end comes evil has increased and problems are happening and things are going around because god has foretold us you and i children of god we should know better he's going to take care of you he takes care of me he doesn't let go of our hand even though we let go he doesn't let go and he tells us what's happening and you know some of them oh will our streets ever be safe again you know we come out of looking at the worst part we seen the tsunami hit us like nothing else we lost what 40 something almost 50000 people in 3 minutes mostly children and infants it shook us we suddenly started doing things for people the church was so uh, uh, one sided i would say people's church at least i don't know what other churches right we didn't think that the compassion arm that god had told us to go and give the cup of cold water in my name was as important as praying and doing other things and suddenly tsunami hits and we realize we better start doing that also today thank god our compassion arm of of center of hope and and all the other things we do has has really grown and grown and grown because god has shown us what needs to be done and 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 you know we've gone through many many things we look at terrorism how how it just ripped people apart because human beings we cannot make it on our own today every 3 months we are reminded about the nuclear bomb and and world war 3 we don't know who is pressing the button right in the news this president wants to press the button that president wants to press the button every 3 months are we going into nuclear war you know this is a kind of world that we live in we can look at the enemies on the outside we can look at world war 3 we can look at all those happening but i think we would be wise as a country to look within historian will durant in his book on roman history uh, it, it, his book was called rome's history caesar and christ and this is what he said a great civilization is not conquered from without until it has first destroyed itself from within the essential cause of rome rome's decline lay in her people and morals i don't see anything different between rome 
and Sri Lanka in that. The decline happens from within. The decline has already started. We're destroying each other within our borders, bringing a fierce psychosis in. We moved away from everything that our forefathers fought to bring us freedom as a nation. You know, they, we went through a time where they fought for freedom. And today we have to risk our lives to practice our chosen religion in this land. We are persecuted for being believers of Jesus Christ or, or having another religion. You know, what was once freedom of religion has now become freedom from religion. That's where we are placed in a human vacuum. Let's look at the other side of it. Family. We live in a nation where families have broken down. And when the family breaks down, everything breaks down. So many of our social ills today can be traced to broken homes. And more specifically to fatherless homes. Many children are born out of wedlock now. I have few statistics. I've given you these over the years. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of all youth sitting in prisons grew up in fatherless homes. Friend, I want to tell you, a family can survive without a nation. But a nation cannot survive without a family. Because God ordained the family. Today as we look at the 70 years of independence. And we celebrate a kind of freedom. I want to tell you the devil is busy breaking the foundation of that freedom. When he breaks the family. The only answer to our nation's problems on the 70th Independence Day of Sri Lanka today I want to declare to you will not be found in the golf face green. Will not be found in parliament. It won't be found anywhere else because it has to be found not in a political system but this freedom is found in the church of Jesus Christ. And how many of you can say amen? We need to turn to God in prayer. Turn back to his word. Because the choice before us is plain. Is it Christ or is it chaos? What is it going to be? Is it conviction or compromise? Is it discipline or disintegration? What is the choice? I want to tell you there is no point going any other place. We have to turn to God himself. We need a new awakening of the Holy Spirit. This year's theme I want to re-remind you, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by my spirit, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the spirit of God. Habakkuk understood this when he prayed this prayer. Let's look at Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. I have heard all about you, Lord. I, have filled, I am filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy. Sri Lanka needs God's intervention. We saw many people turn to the Lord during the tsunami. Remember that during the war when things were really bad, people were turning to God. Empty churches were filling up. People, when everything failed around them, they started looking to God. But what happened? A little while later, people very soon begin to forget God. And they begin to forget God. They begin to go on their own ways. I want to tell you today, we need to pray. We need to pray for God's blessing on Sri Lanka. And for a national spiritual awakening. We need a national spiritual awakening. That is what we must pray for. But how? How do we pray for this? What must we do? Well, God gives us the answer in a very familiar portion of scripture. I want you to read this. Okay, please read this and read this loud together. Let's read 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. How do we need to pray? What do we need to do? 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. Let's read it together. Then if my, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. It is God's cure for a sick country. It is God's cure for a, 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 a place that needs healing. Right? Notice what God is saying here. He says, if you want your land to be healed, it starts with, if my people who are called by my name. God is not pointing his finger and said, if Sri Lanka is to be healed, I'm pointing to the house at Diyavanna. I'm pointing to Aralia Gahamandire or temple trees. I'm pointing to parliament. No, God is not saying for this country to be healed. We got to point our house to parliament or the rulers. He says, if this country is to be healed, I point my finger, not at the house at dear one, but the house of God. I point my finger to the church of Jesus Christ. If my people who are called by my name, Church, that's why I told you golf is green does not have the answer today. You have the answer today. You know, this is not to pep you up and to get you excited because you're a Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the true fact of the living God. God's word never lies. And he says, if you, my people, you make the difference, I will heal your land. If you don't believe that, you won't believe the Bible. That's how responsible we have to be. That's the responsibility given to us. To whom much is given, much is required. We don't come to church and receive Christ as Savior and be washed in the blood, be filled with His Holy Spirit so that we can go on saying we are lucky guys so we can move on. No, we are given responsibility. And that is, He says, if my people, God's finger points at you, it points at me, were called by my name, we must turn from our wicked ways. And we must call upon him. We must pray. In Acts chapter 12. Talks about a prayer that triumphs with God. When we begin to pray. How we can triumph in prayer with God. The Bible tells us about a time. When things are very bleak. That the young church was struggling. And the miracles were happening. The spirit of God had fallen. But tremendous opposition came. Because the system of religion and government got threatened and they came against the church the two pastors at that time were James and Peter they were co-pastors of the church and Herod what does he do let's read it and then I will tell you the story in in Acts 12 1 to 5 about that time King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church he had the Apostle James killed with a sword when Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out of public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. So look at this. The church is in a very bleak position. Young, inexperienced, new church. God has begun to move. They got their mandate. What does Herod do? Herod comes in and kills Pastor James. When he killed Pastor James, he saw a typical politician. He saw his constituents were very happy. So to keep them happier or maybe uh, he needed it for election, I don't know what. He went and he took Pastor Peter. And he put Pastor Peter in prison. And he imprisoned him. Obviously in time to execute him also. And what happens? When this happened and Peter was also next in line for execution. What did the church do? The church went to Lipton Circus, took big posters, put people's church on it, released our pastor and they marched around Lipton Circus. No? No? The church went on strike. The church said, don't do anything. Don't, don't negotiate with this government. Don't sell Dilma tea. Don't do anything. Go on strike. Is that what the church did? What did the church do? They took swords and they went and they cut off all the heads of Herod's soldiers. No. No. Listen to me. 
when you are going through a bleak tough situation when you are battling when you are seeing injustice when you see things happening that are not even your fault and people are lying and cheating and doing things wrong what do you do you take the secret weapon that god has given you you bring out the secret weapon the all the other doors were closed one remained open and that was the secret weapon door of prayer oh i'll tell you everybody you may say man you hate messages on prayer prayer is the most boring subject to talk about abi when you get to preach don't pray preach on prayer people will start yawning why we don't like to talk on prayer prayer is boring prayer is not exciting oh pray 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 yes men ask anybody to come for a prayer meeting you'll see how many show up but i want to remind you something the secret weapon god has given you where no man on earth can take away from you no demon in hell can stop you is when you pray prayer is a secret weapon god says you pray you know a lot of us we think of prayer as a last resort oh that happened this happened when through this my goodness are you now here let's go and pray men No, prayer is not the last resort. Prayer should be the first thing we do. Go to the Lord in prayer. I love that hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. What? Everything to God in Oh, what needless pain we forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we forfeit. Oh what I I got the words wrong Oh oh what peace we often forfeit Oh what needless pain we bear Peace we forfeit needless pain we bear why all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer all because we do not pray Oh I'll go and meet the minister. Oh I'll go and meet that rich fellow. Oh I'll go and meet this teacher. I'll do this. I'll go, I'll go to the principal. I I no go to prayer. You want the nation to change? If my people will humble themselves and pray, God is going to make a difference. You see, God wants us to pray. I'm going to give you a few points or take it into your heart. First thing is pray earnestly. Pray earnestly. We read Acts 12 1 to 5. X12 1 to 5 what did the church do the church prayed earnestly peter was in prison going to be killed james was already killed lot of problems bleak situation inexperience young they prayed earnestly how do you pray earnestly you don't go to mr earnest <laughs> you pray earnestly is when you stop praying with your lips and start praying with your heart When you pray with your heart you pray earnestly when you pray with your heart you're the one who moves from by my might and my power to his spirit you pray with your heart you pray earnestly matthew 15:8 says this these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me jesus said these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far away How many of you pray you pray for your food do you really thank god this is basically putting this in your mind okay short prayer okay we're going to pray now okay short prayer have you heard that in that families right no he says pray with your heart if not don't pray at all god i'm so grateful for my food amen fine it's not the length of the prayer is it a heart prayer or is it a lip prayer i remember we used to pray in the in the morning my father used to shout early morning santa kiki Michelle come down for prayer and we used to hate that we had to pray every morning so we had come down dragging and prayer starts with me first youngest to the oldest so me i'm the shortest the niran he'll pray longest on the three of us that's why he's still praying in parliament <laughs> and then uh, prasanta would pray between me and niran then my mother she would pray and pray and pray when she says amen we all sleeping <laughs> then my father will pray the next long prayer my prayer was very easy okay my turn to pray jesus me sambhi bishes me taati krishna ta ki kya hai jesus name amen 
Now you see, there's nothing wrong in the length of the prayer. The problem is, was the heart in the prayer? Mine, no, it wasn't. I was just getting by. But you see, now we are grown ups. I'm telling you and me, some of our prayers have only lip service, they don't have heart. Pray earnestly. The church prayed earnestly. Now they didn't have faith. I'll tell you about that later. But they still prayed earnestly. Right? Prayer to be powerful and effective. You have to acknowledge who you're praying to. And pray to him earnestly. Does God want to send spiritual awakening to Sri Lanka? Are you sure? Number two. Pray constantly and passionately. Pray constantly and passionately. Now I'm reading the same verse. You know what I do with Acts, right? I can take the same verse to three Sundays. Again, I'm going to Acts 12, 1, 5, but this is from the New King James. Earlier I read it from the New, uh, New Living. New King James says this. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered Constant to prayer was offered to him by the church. Constant prayer. Don't give up. Pray earnestly. Stretch outward. Pray with agony. Earnestly means you pray from your heart with everything you got. Right? You know, some of, the, some of them pray like this. Right? They pray. They say, Lord, oh, please release Pastor Peter or anything, Lord, whatever. Oh, Lord, can you do this? I need this, but I, I don't know, Lord, I'm tired of praying. So what? Please do something. Flippant prayers. No heart prayer. But we think we did our prayer. So we are okay. No, they prayed constantly and passionately. Right? I want to ask you, you know. They said, Lord, deliver Peter. Did you pray passionately? And do you pray constantly for your marriage? You're struggling with your marriage. Do you passionately and constantly pray for your marriage from your heart? Do you constantly, passionately pray for your children, your family, that it will be okay? Do you constantly and passionately pray for those things that you are going through? Do you constantly and passionately pray for your church? Do you constantly and passionately pray for your nation? They prayed passionately. God promises that his people will find him if they search for him with all their heart. All your heart. Thirdly, pray jointly. Pray together. Pray jointly. We should be praying together. Acts 12, 5. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very The earnestly. church prayed. They prayed together. I want to tell you there is power in united prayer. Jesus said the same thing in Matthew 18 and 19. I also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same speaks of two people with the same burden coming together and praying. There is power. Some of you need to pray together. You're praying about the family. Husband and wife get together. You're praying about some need. Call a colleague. Pray together. And when we pray together, God answers prayer. Finally, I want to tell you my final point is pray, 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 pray. Pray. Even if you don't feel like it, pray. If you have little faith, pray. If you don't have any faith, pray. Pray. If you, if, you don't, if you think nothing is going to happen, pray. Just pray. Keep praying. No matter how you feel. I know God wants you to have faith. And on your faith, he can move the mountain. But I want to tell you, God moves when you pray. Even when you don't have faith. God moves when you pray. I want to tell you, I wish my faith was always up on the mountain. My faith is down in the dumps. But you still have to pray. And when you pray, pray, pray and pray. God can work. He works despite of your doubts. I'm not negating the faith prayer. Please don't. This is not negating the faith sermon. Faith. Without faith you cannot please God. Faith is the language of heaven. Faith is a, is a substance that opens the doors for you. But sometimes in your life. When you're so down and out. And you're worried that your faith uh, measure is not up. You still need to pray. Because God moves in spite 
of what you are feeling in spite of your doubt in the times that you are weakened you know these people prayed acts 12 as you close the chapter right as you close the chapter it says these people prayed they were not sure they were weakened their faith was not up but listen to me church a weak weak faith prayer was still mightier than herod did you hear what i'm saying a weak faith prayer was still mightier than herod a weak faith prayer is still mightier than hell how many can say amen acts 12 was 6 hours i'll tell you the story the church prayed they were afraid they were locked in a house the door was locked they were very new they didn't know what was happening they began to pray what happens while they prayed the angel of the lord came to the prison you must understand herod was so worried about peter escaping he didn't put one guard uh, uh, one one unit of guards he put four units each unit had four soldiers he had four stations of soldiers between the cell of peter and the iron gates of the prison acts chapter 12 go home and read the chapter right while they were praying peter's chains fell off and the angel of the lord stood there while they were praying peter got his cloak the angel said let's walk they started walking first four soldiers first unit just slept through second unit slept through third unit slept through comes to the fourth unit how many of you been to our malls i have put in other places you know how when you start walking the doors are closed because it's air condition you walk in and it opens you go through it closes behind well i want to tell you before our malls and modern technology could do that peter came he passed the four guard posts he came and the iron gates of the jail opened peter walked through it closed behind and peter kept on walking there was no electricity even then you know why because they didn't need electricity they had the power of the holy spirit of god in them Let's pray. Let's just pray. They didn't even have electricity. Leave alone anything else. Iron gates just go through. Peter comes. He knocks on the door. They are praying at Mary's house. Rhoda comes to the door, and a little girl. She opens the door. Peter, ha! Huh? She's so shocked. she closes the door and she goes back in she says peter is out there peter is out peter can't come in because she shut the door right and 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 this girl, these people are praying oh lord please say pastor peter oh god do something we have no faith we don't even believe what we are praying but we are praying because we are supposed to pray just like us hallelujah right they were praying and she says no peter is here they said shut up little girl don't make a noise can't you see we are praying don't disturb the prayer meeting finally peter goes and they open the door and there is peter completely released why because the church prayed the church prayed you see in spite of their lack of faith god still came through there's an importance in faith but i want to tell you sometimes when you don't feel like it sometimes when you're down in the dumps sometimes when you just can't make it you still pray and when you pray god hears your prayer look at how things change because of prayer in the beginning the story starts in the chapter you know herod gives a speech and the people come and 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 start glorifying herod they give god's place to herod and herod loved it he didn't correct them and he was slain and he died in chapter 12 So if you look at this whole chapter at the beginning of the chapter Herod is on the rampage arresting and persecuting Christian leaders at the end Herod is struck down and dies the chapter opens with Peter James dead Peter in prison and Herod triumphing the chapter closes with Herod dead Peter free and the word of God triumphing hallelujah 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 all because the church prayed i want to tell you man has his will but god god will always have his way and it is not over 
till God says it's over.